What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a deep dive into all the hooks that I like to use for a Senko. You know, a Senko is one of the most versatile baits. So many ways you can fish it, so many different things you can do with it. And uh, it could be a little overwhelming on what hook to use for it. You know, there's so many different opinions on this and uh, I really use a few different hooks depending on what I'm doing with it. I just kind of want to walk you through it and uh, show you why I choose certain hooks, why I don't choose other hooks, and uh, kind of walk through everything and uh, kind of explain my hook selection for fishing a Senko. But I appreciate you guys tuning into this video. You know, uh, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. We're pumping out three videos a week here for the entire year. So uh, trying to get a bunch of content out and uh, appreciate you guys following along as always trying to uh, help you guys catch some more fish. You know, that's the goal of my channel is I want each and every one of you to leave each video with a piece of knowledge that'll help you catch some more fish. So hopefully you learned something here in this video. But like I said, I appreciate you guys tuning in and, and watching this video. All right, first up, we're gonna talk wacky rigging. A Senko. So there's really just one hook that I use for wacky rigging and that's the TK-137 from Trocar. Either the weedless version or the non-weedless version depending on if I'm fishing around wood. If I'm fishing around wood, I go with the weedless version. And, and wood could mean so many different things. It could be, you know, trees, could be brush piles, could be dock posts. And I guess you could even throw steel in there as well if we're talking about dock cables or something like that. I'm throwing this hook right here. So this is the Trocar TK-137 weedless version. And I'm exclusively fishing the number two size on the wacky rig. So the cool thing about this hook is it's got these two plastic weed guards on here. So those right there help keep that hook point from getting stuck in in that wood those dock cables dock posts anything like that you know there's they're not very um what's the word i'm looking for they're not very strong i guess so the the key thing is you know when a fish bites it they're not going to get in the way of you hooking that fish they're going to bend right out of the way but they're just enough to uh, help you glide that wacky rig up over any of that cover so you got the weedless version right there, or you got the non-weedless version, which is the exact same hook minus the little black weed guard on there. Um, then, you know, as far as rigging, you know, most everybody knows how to rig a wacky rig, but if you're new to the channel or new to Senko fishing, let me just walk you through it. So right here, is a five inch Yamamoto Senko. This is actually in Becker's Black Magic. So it's a black and blue with silver flake. It really lights up well. It's available at fishusa.com. But basically you put a small little O-ring or, or some sort of plastic on the middle of your Senko. And then you're taking your hook and rigging it up just like that. So it gives it a little different action Whenever you pull this bait, it kind of pulses and really wiggles well. And then whenever you, you cast this bait out weightless like this, it sinks this way because the hook's a little bit heavier. So the hook's going to fall first and these are just going to kind of wiggle as that bait's falling down. So that right there is a wacky rig and uh, that's probably how I throw the, the Senko the most. It would be a wacky rig you know this bait skips well because whenever you cast this that hook stays up and just the bottom of that Senko hits the water and it skips across the water well so you can skip this bait and put it in some really tight places get it back under docks really far and then just that weightless shimmy on the fall really helps trigger some bites you know this is a great bait all year long and I catch a lot of fish on the Wacky Rig Senko. And that right there, those are the two hooks I use exclusively for the Wacky Rig. So 
like I said, that's probably the way I rig a Cinco the most, but there are so many uses for a Cinco, so we're just scratching the surface on ways to fish a Cinco. All right, moving on. So if I were to pull or question most fishermen, I think they would agree that the most common hook that you see used on a Cinco would be this right here, just an EWG style hook. That's an extra wide gap. You know, that's probably the most common hook in bass fishing, but I'm here to tell you, it's probably my least favorite hook in bass fishing. I really do not like the EWG. Um, I use it for just a small amount of things. Um, there's just much better options than the EWG, and, and let me show you why. So first up, there's no gap. I like to have a, a from the, the hook tie to the hook point is going to be your gap. So when I run my finger on there, you see there is very minimal gap in line with that. So whenever that hook is in a fish's mouth, and if this part pops open his mouth on the way out, it could literally just slide right out. There's no gap to catch that fish. Whereas if you look at, say, the hook we were just talking about, if this right here pops open that fish's mouth, look at all that gap that's going to hook that fish. So those are the style hooks I like to go with, one that is has a little more gap. So I'm here to tell you, don't use the EWG style hook for your Cinco's. Go with more of a round bend style hook. So this one right here is the HD worm hook. It's the TK100. It's one of the most common worm hooks in bass fishing. Just a very standard worm hook. But if we go back to that gap, if I run my finger on there, look at the difference in gap. I mean, it is clear in my whole finger like that. So there is so much room to hook that fish and you're not gonna miss those bites. That's the key thing is you don't wanna miss those bites. So when do I use this hook right here? So this is the four aught size of the HD worm hook. I like to throw this hook whenever I'm wanting to Texas rig this bait, but weightless. So if I'm fishing it around you know, grass clumps or uh, you know, kind of more open water that I don't want to throw the wacky rig, that's when I go to this hook. You know, like I said, this is majority of the time weightless. If I do add a weight, it's going to be a small weight, you know, an eighth ounce or less. I like to do an eighth or a sixteenth ounce weight and it, just a little bit of extra weight to kind of help that nose fall down a little bit. But rigging is very simple. So when you look at your, your Senkos, this is one thing that maybe not a lot of people know about is on one side of the egg sack is going to have the initials GYB. And that is supposed to be the bottom. So whatever side of the egg sack on the Senko has the letters on, that is where you're going to start to put your hook through. That's the side you want your hook to be resting when you're done rigging it. So just go through like that. And then I'm going to run the hook basically right through those letters. And that is how the bait was designed to be rigged and to be fished. Just like that right there. And that right there is perfect weightless. You know, like I said, I'll add a little tiny weight sometimes, but that right there is by far the best hook to throw a Senko on if you're just looking to throw it on a lightweight or really you could use a heavier weight. I just prefer to go to a straight chang hook, which we'll get into here in a minute. But when I'm using this right here, like I said, if I'm fishing around grass, just throwing a weightless Senko, you know, over a big grass flat or flipping little holes in the grass where I want a, a weedless bait, but a weightless bait. I'm going with that round bend hook right there and that sucker will catch some fish. That is, it doesn't get any more simple than that, but it doesn't get any better than that, if you know what I mean. I mean, that catches so many fish and uh, you can't beat that hook right there for a Senko. Some, some other options, you know, 
There, there's two different versions of the round bend hook in the trocar line. So you have the, the standard HD worm hook, but then you also have the Pro V worm hook, which it's essentially a copy of the same hook. You know, it looks very similar from that point of view, but when I turn it around this way, you see the difference in that bend. This has the Pro V bend in it, and this one's just a standard round bend. So you're able to, this one's a little bit heavier duty, and it allows you to uh, have a heavier gauge hook. It actually sinks a little faster. So I kind of alternate between these two, depending on uh, the type of cover I'm fishing, what pound line I'm using. Obviously you want to use a heavier pound line on the heavier gauge hook, because you're going to need that more strength to get the hook point through the fish. The regular HD worm hook is a little bit lighter diameter hook, so you're able to use a little bit lighter line. Um, as far as line, whenever I'm throwing this weightless, you know, I like somewhere between 12 and 15 pound line. You know, I don't like to get too heavy when I'm throwing a weightless Cinco, but those right there are my two options, either the Pro V or the regular round bend. I've been really leaning towards the Pro V a lot here lately, but um, it's hard to beat the OG HD worm hook. You know, that has caught me so many fish and I got so much confidence in it. Sometimes it's hard to change that up, but. All right, next up. This would be my third hook that I use. And this is it. These are the three hooks that I use for a Senko. And, and each one's a little different situation. I kind of mentioned it there a little bit ago, and that is a straight shank hook. So this is the, the OG TK-130. Well, I got a tangled up mess here. If we can get one out. All right, there's one right there. The TK-130, you know, that's just your standard straight shank hook. Everybody knows about a straight shank hook, but look, you do the gap test on it. You got so much gap there, and uh, you know, it's always gonna hook those fish. You got that one. And then just like the round bend hooks, you have the Pro V version of the same hook, which same situation. It's a little bit heavier gauge wire and it's got that Pro V bend on the back. So sometimes it, it actually helps hold in the Senko a little bit better with that Pro V bend, but Today, we're just gonna talk about the TK-130. So, we're gonna reuse this, our wacky rig Cinco here, so I'm not tearing up extra baits. But basically, this hook, the TK-130 straight shank, is gonna be for when I'm flipping this bait. You know, a, a big deal in, in Florida is flipping a Cinco around, say, spawning fish or into, you know, lily pads, Kissimmee grass, that type of stuff. And the reason that I don't like the sh round bend, let's get him back rigged up. This will be this will be a good demonstration here, for so you guys can see why I go to the straight shank. All right, let's get him rigged back up. Okay, there's our round bend hook. Now let's get our straight shank. Like I said, this is for when I'm flipping it. So I'll use a little bit heavier weight sometimes, you know, up to a, a quarter or three ace, depending on the cover. All right, it's got a good keeper on there. Keeps the Senko up there. So it's not sliding down. It's got a bunch of gap, so it sticks those fish whenever they bite it. Okay, there we go. Right there. So the main reason I use the straight shank instead of this one is that bend right there. So whenever I'm flipping this, this Senko into cover, if I use the round bend hook, that bend right there is gonna catch every piece of cover, every lily pad, every piece of grass that it, it flips out of, it's gonna catch right there. It's gonna be really frustrating for you. You're gonna tear up your baits and you're not gonna have a good time. So that's when I go to the TK-130 right here. You see you got a straight path down the bait. So you're able to flip that bait in there 
and it pulls right up over any piece of cover, lily pads, semi grass, whatever type of grass you're flipping this bait, I guess vegetation, you're flipping this bait in, reeds, whatever. Doesn't matter what you're flipping it into, it's gonna glide right through it and right up out of it. So it's gonna make your fishing experience much more enjoyable because nobody likes getting caught up in the vegetation all the time. So that is going to uh, save you baits. It's gonna save you a bunch of baits in the long run because when your bait gets hung up on the pad, you get agitated, you start pulling and ripping and it, it just totally tears up your bait and uh, ruins the Senko and tears it up. So then you're having to put a new bait on and it's just the total process. So you're gonna wanna throw the TK-130. This is the four aught size, just like the round bend. The four aught is perfect for the five inch Senko. But that right there, that's the juice on Senko fishing. So those are the three hooks I like to use. <clears throat> Trocar makes a ton of great hooks, but these are the three hooks, three or four hooks. You know, I gave you a couple options there with the Pro V Bend, but these are the style hooks that I like to use for Senko fishing. Um, if you're interested in checking out my signature series colors, these right here are available at fishusa.com. They're exclusive to Fish USA. There's a link in the description down below. You can check them out. Like I said, we have Becker's Black Magic. That is a black and blue with a silver flake. And then this one here is Becker's Magic Juice. It is a, a dark green pumpkin and natural shad laminate. So it's a very natural looking color. Both of them are flat out fish catchers, but boy, that was a deep dive into Senko fishing. Hopefully you guys learned something and picked something up. Check out all the Trocar hooks available at Fish USA as well. But Again, I appreciate you guys staying along with me for this deep dive. Hopefully you learned something. Leave me those likes and comments down below. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.